Unfortunately, I had already lost the entire morning trying to find someone willing to take me to the island. Okay. I did, however, manage to rent out a small boat for the day, so I still had some time to get to the island and explore the church before nightfall. After what felt like an hour of rowing, I finally reached the island. There was something heavy in the air of this place, and I didn't feel welcome. Perhaps don't the go bell there was a warning for people to stay away, but I didn't let it distract me from my reason for being there. Upon reaching the old church, I observed the gothic exterior, accompanied by the scattered tombstones that lay silent and shy of the large bell tower. The interior of the church was equally gothic, except it had not yet succumbed to the harsh outdoor conditions and had aged surprisingly well. I guess the secret to keeping something safe is hiding it in plain sight. Luckily for my grandfather, no one suspected that the large iron bell in the tower served as a convenient counterweight. I just hoped that no one else discovered the way into the crypt and that the letter was just a fake. Um... Ooh, stairs. Finding it hard to ignore the distinct atmosphere of an ancient tomb as I descended into the dark crypt, I was horrified to discover that the coffins had been moved. My grandfather assured me that he had never okay. entered the tomb since he took the Polaroids all those years ago, and no one else knew where the crypt was. Just when I began to suspect that a grave robber had somehow managed to infiltrate the tomb, I was even more surprised to see the gold cross simply placed on the floor. If someone had broken into the crypt and found the cross, why was it left behind? There was nothing else of value in the tomb. Devil Tree seemed like the obvious culprit, but to what end? And who would do such a thing? So you do know that there is a dead person behind you right here, right? Just saying. Devil Tree seemed like the obvious culprit, but to what end? And who would do such a thing? Amid the confusion, I suddenly felt a cold chill sweep through the crypt that was followed by the thrust of a needle on oh, no. my side. Uh... Okay. I don't exactly know how long I was out for, but a sharp pain in my head and the stone-cold floor pressed against my face was the first thing I could feel. It's like that thing in the tomb is just going to jump out and Suddenly, you. everything started to make sense. Whoever sent the letter somehow knew of the cross, but didn't know where the crypt was or how to open it. Behind the smoke screen of legends and ghost stories, this turned out to be nothing more than a heist of a valuable artifact. And I had fallen into a deadly trap. So get out of Fortunately, the secret passage hadn't been sealed, so I had a means of escaping from the crypt. But as I vacated the church, I came to the grim realization that Nightfall had already engulfed the island. I hurried back to the pier only to discover that the boat was gone and there was no other way of reaching the mainland. I didn't know how to explain all of this to my grandfather, swimming. but I knew how upset he would be to know that I failed and that the crypt had also been desecrated. In that grim moment of silence, I began to hear something in the water before spotting a small, familiar boat arriving at the pier. Uh-oh. What was that same... The costume suggested that it was the same time. person from before, but why come back to the island and bring the loot along with Are you? Are you wearing a mask or is that your face? Suddenly, our attention turned to the sound of the bell tower. Eventually, I was distracted by the clutter of something heavy and solid dropping onto a wooden surface. It's a cross. As I noticed the cross at my feet, I looked up only to witness a body being pushed into the lake by something sinister. Push, you just fell in there. Oh no. In a split second, I instantly grabbed the cross and ran towards the bell tower. When I got there, all I could do was wait. I was trapped inside the curse of Devil's Island. Uh, 
The secret passage could only be activated you. by the lever, and it seemed pointless to condemn myself to the crypt for the sake of escaping imminent death. But perhaps my last days trapped oh, in a no. tomb was a far cry from death at the hands of this curse. Is that you? But none of that mattered anyway. You did? Because I was too late. Oh, she's strangling you. Well, looks like you did. There's a jump scare. Oh god, yep, jump scare. It was at that pivotal moment, while still grasping for air, that I finally realized why the cross was so important. As long as you the cross was from within the demon confines lady of the crypt, it served as a means of protection for anyone within the church's walls. The bell tower was built to warn and guide the locals to safety, and offer shelter should evil ever rise again. So many details were lost over time, people had forgotten the true reason behind the church. I can only hope that for the next blue moon on Halloween, we will be ready. Until then, the strange case of the moving what coffins will be my next mystery to put to rest. Tomb, is that you or is that another Since dead person? I was yet to find any plausible explanation, although the locals did mention something about an excessive amount of rainfall a few years ago. As for the masked stranger oh. that dared to challenge the curse of Devil's Island, well, I guess some mysteries will forever remain unsolved. They drowned. Hey, you. Nightmare on a plane. It was Halloween and the flight had suffered a huge delay for whatever reason, which led to most of the passengers being reseated on other flights, leaving only a handful of us, and by us, I mean those unlucky enough not to have been reseated or unable to afford a hotel, stuck at the airport. Despite the long wait, I actually preferred sharing the cabin with fewer passengers, which is something usually one could only accomplish in first class. I enjoyed the luxury of being able to choose my seat once I boarded the flight, while most of the passengers had decided to sit at the far back section of the plane, I chose a quiet corner seat in the front section where there were just a few other passengers that appeared to know each other judging by how close they were seated together. The flight was originally intended to take place during the day but the delay had resulted in an overnight flight. Not a big deal but I did miss seeing the awesome view from outside the window, which eventually led me to focus my attention to the interior of the cabin. Despite the fact that most planes often appear larger on the inside, the enclosed space always made me feel a little uncomfortable and usually resulted in a persistent need for a distraction such as reading a book or listening to music. I was about to pull out my phone when I was suddenly approached by the flight attendant asking me if I wouldn't mind sitting with the other passengers. Albeit confused, I agreed to the unusual request I would be since I was traveling fairly light and I figured there must have been a good reason for it although I did regret asking why when I had the chance. Well, Shortly after changing asked. seats and settling well, in, looking at the entire cabin plunged into an eerie silence. I probably wouldn't have thought that much of it had it not been for the conversations between the other passengers that had quickly faded into frightened whispers of shock and disbelief. Have you ever felt that strange sensation of the atmosphere around you instantly becoming heavy with sorrow and the thought of never being cheerful again? That's exactly no. what it felt like and even more so as I looked to see what everyone was getting so upset about. Oh. I couldn't quite believe my eyes at first and the notion of sharing a small cabin with a dead person for the remainder of the flight was extremely unsettling. I knew that the flight staff were probably just following procedure, but I could still feel my stomach churning in the face of this morbid turn of events. At that point, I decided to head on to the restroom. That dead person didn't get you then. I eventually ended up just taking a breather and telling myself to get a grip. I wasn't the only passenger on the plane after all. 
After a few minutes of finally pulling myself together enough to try to get through the rest of the flight, a loud thud shook the door. Suddenly, the banging stopped and all I could hear was my elevated breathing. Strangely, I felt less safe alone locked inside the restroom than I did outside with the rest of the passengers, so I waited just a few minutes before cautiously opening the door. I couldn't see any sign of danger as I peered through the gap in the door and prepared to vacate the restroom. Just as I was about to discreetly return to my seat, the same flight attendant from before appeared out of nowhere, almost hitting me with a service trolley. It looked like she had just finished serving fresh beverages to some of the passengers, and I remember thinking how strange it was that she appeared oblivious to the loud banging on the restroom door that had occurred just moments prior. Maybe it was her doing the banging. She remained completely speechless, and there was something off about the way she looked at me. You know that weird stare you give someone when you suspect they're onto you for whatever reason? I eventually broke eye contact, and she continued down the aisle to serve drinks to the rest of the passengers. I quickly returned to my seat having almost completely forgotten about the corpse that had been seated in the corner behind me. I still can't believe I managed to walk right here. past it without even noticing. I guess I was still a little distracted by the fact that none of the other passengers appeared to have heard the loud banging on the door either. Well, yeah, why Perhaps she walking it wasn't like that? as loud as I remember, or maybe it was just a prank. It was Halloween after all. At least I had a spooky Halloween tale to share with my young nephews back at home. Even if it meant not being able to share the entire yeah. truth of what really happened on board that flight. At least until now. Uh oh, there's gonna be another jump scare, I know it. Wait a minute, they're all dead? Yep, they are all dead. Except for you. Why are they dead? It was the summer of 1991 at the old Glen Capri, which turned out to be the one dreaded summer I would care to forget. I had only just bought the place, and I hadn't gotten around to renovating anything yet, so the hotel was still pretty shabby and even a little creepy to some extent. The doors and walls creepy. hadn't aged all that well and it didn't have any decent air conditioning, except for the overhead fans which didn't do all that much against the sweltering heat. Fortunately though, I had already received some guests at the motel and it seemed like things were off to a pretty good start for the season. I was actually getting ready to turn in when suddenly I heard the door to the reception close. I looked over to the entrance but to my surprise I couldn't see anyone leaving or entering. I got a strange creepy feeling which was suddenly elevated by the sound of heavy breathing that appeared to come from nowhere. It was rather faint and it took me a minute to realize that it was coming from the other side of the reception desk. I was startled by the sight of a slender hand suddenly clutching onto the desk. It was only when I reached the other side of the desk that the whole situation became clear. What the? It was an old lady in a wheelchair asking for a room. Hello. I immediately asked how she arrived at the motel, to which she responded by pointing to a yellow taxi parked outside. I initially offered her a room on the first floor, but she insisted on having a room on the second floor despite being in a wheelchair, citing that she needed a room with a view. After mentioning that I didn't have any facilities to help her get to the second floor, she simply brushed it off and assured me that the taxi driver would take care of it. As I handed her the keys, I could tell she was the kind of person that despite her age, insisted on doing as much by herself as possible and was very stubborn, but she paid for three nights in advance so I was hardly going to argue. Seeing the taxi drive off seemed like a good time to close up and try to catch up on a few hours of rest while the other guests were sleeping, so I headed to one of the vacant rooms and turned in for the night. It was extremely warm that night, I remember from all the tossing and turning, before eventually falling asleep and having the strangest of dreams. I remember approaching one of the rooms at the motel. As I got closer, I realized it was room 209, the very same room where the old lady in the wheelchair was staying. 
The door was open and it felt like someone was pushing me forward or enticing me to come inside. I slowly pushed the door open further oh. which revealed the old lady sitting in her wheelchair beside the bed, staring right at me. She was frozen, yeah. trying desperately to express how afraid she was with just her eyes. I was feeling some immense pressure on my chest as I could sense a dark presence in the room with us. She kept looking briefly to her left as if someone was behind the door, but as I caught her glancing further to her left I could tell it was something in her peripheral vision, almost behind her that was causing her so much distress. To my horror the door began to open by itself. Uh oh, uh oh, hello. I had never felt so relieved to know that something that felt so real turned out to be just a dream, but there was a residual feeling of intense anxiety that left me wondering why I was dreaming about that room and what um, it was that I saw standing in that dark corner. A demon? For whatever reason, I instinctively got out of bed and peered through the window where my eyes were instantly drawn towards room 209 at the other end of the motel. Everything seemed normal at first until I realized that one of the blinds was pulled down slightly as if someone was staring back at me. My initial anyone. reaction was that the old lady was also having trouble sleeping that night, but then I realized how absurd it was to suggest that an old lady in a wheelchair could even reach that high. It looked like someone very tall was peering through the blinds and it gave me this chill that instantly stifled the heat in my room. Suddenly the gap in the blinds closed which was followed by a strange silence. You know the kind of silence that comes before the storm. I had a weird feeling that the night was far from over for whatever reason. Oh, no. The loud knocking on the door spooked my senses as I contemplated for a while about whether or not I should open it. Who is that? When it became clear that the knocking on the door was not going to stop, I reluctantly opened it and was surprised to find another guest accompanied by her luggage, urging me to call for a taxi right away. I asked her what was wrong and she replied by telling me that she was awoken by loud footsteps and commotion from the room above, and then she began to hear foul language and cursing to the point she had to pack her things and abandon her room. I offered her another room but she wasn't interested, and just insisted on a taxi to get as far away as possible. I kind of thought she was overreacting, but she seemed generally freaked out as if she had seen a ghost. It was when I observed the keys to her room that I realized it was directly below room 209. The motel was practically empty at that point, and I didn't have an explanation for the noise, so I headed on over to room 109 to see if I could witness the disturbance for myself. There's nobody there. I sat at the end of the bed listening closely, and it wasn't long before I could hear footsteps and other unsettling noises from above, almost as if things were being moved around. I thought that perhaps the old lady had received a visitor during the night, which could explain the footsteps and the person peering through the blinds, but what was with all the noise, and why do it so late at night? The noise intensified and almost sounded like someone was being attacked, so I hurried upstairs and approached room 209, which I then knew without a doubt was the source of the uncanny disturbance. There didn't seem to be much point in knocking to compete with the noise on the other side of the door and I could sense that someone might be in danger. Fortunately, the doors to the motel were very old so I managed to force my way in hoping to come to the rescue, but instead I was introduced to a room plunged into darkness and silence. The noise had stopped. I could see the old lady in her wheelchair beside the bed, just like in my dream except she was slumped over and showed no signs of life. I think she's dead. She was cold to the touch and had no pulse, so I called the police who later confirmed that she had died from heart failure. There were no signs of a struggle and the only key to the room was on the table next to the window, so there couldn't have been anyone else in the room with her, so there was no suspicion of foul play. I told the police about the strange noises, but they refused to believe it was relevant to the cause of death, in light of the evidence, or lack thereof, for that matter. A few weeks later, I tried to put this whole thing behind me by making room 209 once again available to the guest, but every time I would prepare the room, I would find the furniture and other contents of the room scattered all over the place the following the morning. The room directly below also proved to be uninhabitable due to the loud noises that could still be heard every night since the old lady passed away. I still don't have a valid explanation for what happened that night. I can only speculate and hope to never experience anything like that again.
Wait, is this whole thing a dream? Uh oh. Ew, no, that's creepy. Oh god. Uh. Oh wait, you're red, bitty eyes. 